A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Wednesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Before we get into the video, be sure to like, share and subscribe. We are starting to get into some very interesting times indeed. And there is a possibility that things are looking a little bit clearer as we move towards the month of November. and Possibly even in the early portion of the winter season. But as always, I try and show you the interesting things that are going on around the UK, Ireland, and indeed Europe and beyond. Um, and this was the scene from central Madrid back four or five days ago, where we've seen in excess of 100 millimetres of rain falling within a 24-hour period. And in fact, um, Madrid's wettest day since 1920, I believe, here. So you can see here, this is a tweet by our friends at the BBC Weather Centre uh, showing that Madrid... Banco de Espana in metro station on Thursday. This was the scene. It was Madrid's wettest day since at least 1920, with 107 millimeters of rain falling within a 24 hour period. Two of the top four wettest days for the city have occurred in the last two months here. And of course, I believe anyway, that is a direct response to not only what the atmosphere is doing, but of course, the very warm. Um, North Atlantic Ocean at this moment in time, also potentially the strengthening of the El Nino as well. So, like I said, very interesting things going on at the moment. The Arctic Oscillation, as you can see here, looks to stay predominantly neutral, maybe marginally uh, negative over the next several days here. And then, of course, there is a bit of a spread in the models, as you can see here, into the early portion of November here. Um, some models indicate quite a firm positive, but also some suggesting a firm negative as well here. North Atlantic Oscillation is predominantly neutral um, as we go into the month of November, as you can see here off the GFS Ensemble here, which is rather interesting. But if we dig a little bit deeper, there is other aspects worth considering. Now, this is the current sea surface temperature profile around the planet at the moment. Of course, we still have that firm positive in the ocean dipole, or IOD. It is the strongest since 2019. And there has been, in recent day, you know, week to 10 days, uh, a, a strong westerly wind burst over the tropical Pacific. Now, of course, I've been alluding to the El Nino and a little bit more details with regards to what's going on in recent weeks. And uh, a bit of a, you know, reflection of a, a firm east-based El Nino within the sea surface temperature profile. But like I said in yesterday's video, the multivariant ENSO index looks at the atmosphere and that is a little bit contradictory to what the ocean temperature anomalies are showing with more of a, a potential mixture between east-based and central Madoki-based El Nino uh, situation at the moment here. Now, if that strong westerly wind burst has merit, it will have shifted uh, some of that warm water over the West Pacific eastwards in the form of a Kelvin wave, which transits the uh, equatorial uh, subsurface equatorial Pacific Ocean. And then what you would expect to see would be a ball of warmer water showing up over the eastern portion of the Pacific. Now, that, of course, would enhance the water temperatures in the Nino region 1.2 and that would firm up actually the prospects of a, a, a strong east based El Nino as we uh, move from autumn into the early portion of the winter season. To be honest with you that would be the, the nail in the coffin with regards to the potential of cold during at least the first half of the up, upcoming winter season. So we'll look at in a little bit more detail than that even as we go further into today's video here um so so if we look at the cfs v2 weeklies at the moment you can see here upcoming seven days very wet compared to average particularly so across parts of iberia through france in central europe southern scandinavia and the majority of england wales and ireland slightly drier than average if you notice here across northwest scotland in particular the outer hebrides and the northwest highlands here as we skip into week two firmly wet than average week three firmly wet than average and that takes out into the 14th of november here which is rather interesting 
when you look at the CFSV2 monthlies. Here is the CFSV2 monthly for the month of November. And that, folks, is a darn wet November, considering what we have seen during the month of uh, October. And we are going to continue to see that rain falling through the middle and second half of this work week here. So it looks as if this firmly wetter than average pattern is becoming firmly entrenched in the overall um, northern hemispheric situation here. Now, if we pan out, you can see some interesting correlations taking place at the moment here. Here is the northern hemispheric view, and we have got a few notable things to look at at the moment here. We've got strong positive extending from the Ural Mountains towards Svalbard and the parts of our side of the Arctic here. All the while, we've got a quite a deep negative extending from the Baffin Straits all the way across the British Isles and Ireland at the moment here. Now, what that may do is this may put a little bit of pressure on the polar vortex and try to shift some of that warmth that we're seeing over eastern uh, Siberia towards the North American side of the pole. What that would do is enhance the prospects of something colder over eastern North America. But then, of course, as the cold drives further south over eastern North America, you increase the gradient between the Caribbean and the, the eastern United States and Canada. That then drives a stronger zonal um transatlantic jet stream west uh, to east across the Atlantic and it reinforces the unsettled stormy and very wet pattern that the CFS V2 is indicating here. I think that there is something to this uh, with the CFS V2's um, solution for the month of November. So that's very interesting. Pay attention to that chart folks because I'm going to show you something uh, rather interesting in the next clip so here's a tweet here by met forecast uh, indicating uh, the potential with the mjo likely moving into phase eight which is assuming we see the above rise in the aam um as a result we could be looking at an incredibly wet and unsettled november now bear in mind that this tweet was put out back on the 15th of october and look at this chart look at how similar it is to what the CFSV2 is indicating here. So this would take into consideration the positive Enzo, phase eight of the Manjulian oscillation, and also the possible weakening of the stratospheric polar vortex from Siberia towards North America here. So you can see exactly what um, the overall situation is indicating. It's like the CFSV2 is seeing uh, some of the uh, large drivers, the climate drivers that we look at with regards to uh, the longer range pattern. I just think that's quite interesting um, to say the least. Okay, so Met Forecast also went on to say, now we're talking huge westerly wind burst now taking place over the Pacific Ocean. This should help drive the MJO and in turn lead to the more positive AMO and the El Nino conditions here. So if we look at the 850 zonal wind anomaly chart here you've got that very strong westerly wind burst now starting to show up in the forecast period here and that has uh, taken place we've got the strong easterly winds associated with the um, the positive iod over the indian ocean but you can see here further uh, east between australia and the international date line we've got some very strong westerly winds now starting to show up now as i've said already Underneath the Pacific waters, with these westerly wind bursts, you then see the development of a Kelvin wave, which then is a ball of warm water that then transits eastwards through and underneath the equatorial Pacific Ocean. And then about a month or so, uh, two months later down the road, you then see that um, warm water, subsurface warm water, then become, um, you know, raised to the surface over the eastern portion of the pacific ocean this in turn could then start to drive more upward motion over the eastern portion of the pacific now i'm not saying that we have to just kind of shut the door on any prospects of winter weather remember that we've got the uh, the, the indications of a weakening of the polar vortex but i think it's more favorable for north america as opposed to europe 
I think, in, in fact, uh, one of the concerns that I would have is this um, warming taking place now over um, within the Gulf of Alaska here. We're starting to see waters um, go from colder than average to warmer than average. This could be a negative implication in terms of seeing more positive heights across northwestern North America here. Having that positive um, in this general region here can tend to favor more cold outbreaks into the United States, something similar to 2013-14, uh, where we had that very powerful um, west to east um, zonal jet stream over the Atlantic Basin here. And a lot of that was to do with that very strong positive anomaly over uh, Alaska, northwestern Canada, driving frequent spills of Arctic air into the North American pattern. And of course, with that type of weakness, warming Siberia towards North America, like I say, that tends to be um, more favorable for cold in North America, but also an enhancement of the Icelandic trough over our side of uh, the, the hemisphere here. So the, the one positive aspect is we've got, of course, the um, easterly QBO, which has frictional effects on the, uh, on the jet stream um, around across both the North Pacific and also the North Atlantic. But is the question is this, is the El Nino and the positive IOD going to override um, the, the potential uh, of what the easterly QBO can have? That is going to be the, the golden question. I think we're going for a warm, wet and potentially stormy November for the Northwest of Europe here, based on all the things that I'm seeing at this moment in time. Interesting tweet here by our friends at World Climate Service. Remarkable collapse of the negative PDO. So that, of course, is that warm water uh, south of Alaska and the strip between the Baja, California, uh, west, southwestwards, um, below um, Hawaii. We start to see that the water temperatures have cooled to the east of Japan, and therefore we're starting to see that negative PDO weaken. That then also could work hand in hand with the potential strengthening of the El Nino. I think that negative PDO, the hangover of the, the three-year La Nina, is potentially um, going to start weakening, and therefore we may start to see a further strengthening and um, coupling between ocean and atmosphere over the central and eastern portion of the Pacific Ocean here. Finally, another tweet here by World Climate Service indicating the percentage of years with above normal mean sea level pressure with an El Nino and most positive IOD in October and December. So the November through January period, interesting stuff, 1963. So this is, of course, for a, a ridge over Europe, negative to the north and northwest here, 1963, 1972, 77, 82, 86, 1991, 94, 97 Super El Nino, of course, with a 2006 El Nino, which had, of course, warm, wet implications. So, 97, 2006, and 2015 was the last Super El Nino. Of course, we had Storm Desmond that brought havoc across many parts of the world, uh, or should I say Europe. I'm hoping that we aren't going to that as we move into the month of November here and even in the December. Percentage of years with above normal uh, 100 um, meter wind speeds. El Nino and most positive IODs here, 63, 72, 77, 82, 86, 91, 94, 97, 06, and 2015. And based on this, folks, it looks as if we are going to what could be uh, somewhat of a 2015 version of weather pattern as we go forward here. So very interesting times to come. Keep it right here on my YouTube channel. I greatly appreciate everybody's support. Do drop a comment in the section below. Let me know what you think of the content today. And we will continue to uh, look at this in great depth in the coming days and weeks to come. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you again tomorrow with more weather content. Stay tuned. Bye for now.